Hi folks, this is Mark by Mark A. Foster PhD for the Institute for Dialectical Metarealism. First, let me point out I was politely corrected. APAC is not an exclusively Jewish organization. Wanted to get that out of the way. Uh, I thought it was, but it is not. And uh, so um, please, if you wrote it down incorrectly, correct your notes. <laughs> Um, this podcast will be a follow-up on the last one that I gave on Western, in particular, North American Zionism. I made a mistake. How did I do that? Well, okay, what I did was I said that I would include a discussion of Christian Zionism, and I forgot. So I will do that now. Basically, what I will do is talk about the interrelationships between Jewish Zionism and Christian Zionism, particularly in the West. Um, that's what I'm familiar with, and so that's what I will talk about. Um, as a sociologist of religion, uh, however much I may despise Zionism, I have studied it, and so I know quite a bit about it. And so let's just begin and uh, try to see where this discussion leads. Um, first, Jewish Zionism was already broached in the last podcast in the West, in particular in North America. And it is the idea that uh, Israel should be supported, uh, that um, Israel, although not the nationality of Americans or Canadians, uh, still should be seen uh, as a friend, uh, as an ally, as a country worthy of support. Uh, in many cases, financial support. There are a lot of organizations which raise money for various organizations in Israel. Uh, there are some Zionist organizations which exists both in North America and in Israel. So there is a complicated uh, connection between Zionism in Israel and North America. But here's the point of this podcast is to relate Zionism, as we just discussed it, to Christian Zionism. Now, there are a variety of different Christian Zionisms. What I am talking about is evangelical Christian Zionism. Let me first explain what I mean by evangelical. Evangelical Christianity was an offshoot in the 1940s and 1950s from fundamentalist Christianity. For the most part, doctrinally, Fundamentalists and evangelicals of the time agreed. Since that time, uh, evangelicalism has divided into a variety of different movements, which do not see eye to eye with one another. But at that time, it was not doctrine that was the issue. The issue was separatism. Fundamentalists argued that uh, Christians should remain separate from people who are not Christians. And again, Christians meaning fundamentalist Christians. They should not go to the same schools. So many Christians established uh, their own academies. Uh, they should not dance in some cases. Uh, they should not sing anything except for gospel songs. Women should not wear makeup. Uh, some cases they would drive around only in dark cars, a variety of things which made them stand out. Uh, in a way, fundamentalism was close, although not entirely close, to the Mennonite movement and its subsects of the Amish, but not entirely. Um, so the fundamentalists were certainly very conservative, very traditional, and still are, and there are gradations of fundamentalists. There is that famous group in Topeka, Kansas, which I never name, uh, which I actually had contact with because they used to come to where I worked. 
to the college where I worked and pick it. And these little kids, I assume members of the family of the people who ran the church, would literally yell out, yell out four-letter words to passing cars. One looked directly at me and screamed out profanity. Kind of shocking, to be honest. It didn't bother me. I'm not a, not a prude. But just seeing kids that are that indoctrinated into a system that they would curse out people that they don't even know. But that's who they are. Um, now, most fundamentalists are not that extreme. But theologically, meaning in terms of what their belief system is, there is not much difference. Typically, typically, fundamentalists are conservative and hold to a premillennial eschatology. What is that? First, premillennialism. Premillennialism is the idea that before Christ returns, numerous events need to occur in the world. I will not go through all of them since it's, it's not really relevant to this podcast, but one of them is the return of Jews to the Holy Land. Okay, so that's premillennial. That's a part of what premillennial is. Eschatology. Eschatology is a term for the theology of end times. There are numerous eschatologies in Christianity. I mentioned premillennialism. There is also postmillennialism, amillennialism, and others. But the one that we will focus on, the only one that is really relevant here because it pertains to Christian Zionism is evangelical post, I'm sorry, premillennial premillennialism. So what does in fact that entail? Okay. The idea basically is that, well, they believe that Christ will return. Uh, some people who are fundamentalists actually predicted various dates in the past. They were wrong. Uh, then they had to correct themselves. I remember one particular fundamentalist group, which actually fell apart after the guy made his third promise of the return of Christ, which never happened. And so uh, he actually appeared at the door when a journalist knocked on it and he was drunk. Obviously, he was very upset that his predictions did not materialize. Okay. Evangelicals. Evangelicalism is an offshoot of fundamentalism. For all intents and purposes, when evangelicalism separated from fundamentalism, the two of them held almost identical theologies, meaning they believed basically in the same doctrines. There were no significant difference in, differences in that area. Where there was a difference was in the concept of separatism. So fundamentalists would argue that true Christians, fundamentalist Christians, uh, should be separated from people who are not fundamentalist Christians. Many fundamentalists had their own school systems. Many of them refused to wear makeup. Many of them uh, did not dance or did not listen to anything except gospel music. Many of them drove in dark cars. You get the idea. They were very, very conservative. Not as conservative as, say, the Mennonites or the Amish, but going in that direction. What happened then? Well, evangelicals back in the 1940s and 1950s who held to those same basic ideas began to say, look, we agree with you fundamentalists on theology. What we don't agree with is the doctrine of 
separation. After all, if Christians are going to spread the gospel, how can they do that if they are apart, physically apart from other people who are not evangelical or fundamentalist Christians? And that was a rather convincing argument. What that meant was that over time, the majority of fundamentalists became evangelicals. There are still fundamentalists today, but they are a tiny minority of people in that particular type of premillennial Christianity. So they're not as big as they once were. Um, the basic idea, which is held to by evangelicals and many fundamentalists as well, is that before Christ returns, Jews have to return to the Holy Land. That's one of the main ideas. There are others as well, but that's one of the major ones. That until that happens, until Jews return to the Holy Land, there can't be a return of Christ. It, it simply won't happen. Now, does that mean that these evangelicals were concerned necessarily about Jews? That I don't know. I can't read their minds. But I do know why they believed and believe what they do. It is not because they necessarily were looking for a homeland for the Jews. That, of course, was what Zionists who were Jews wanted. They wanted a homeland. Christians basically saw the establishment of Israel as a prerequisite for the return of Christ. So an entirely different idea. Very, very different. Hardly any similarity at all to Jewish Zionists. So Jewish Zionism and Christian Zionism are very, very different philosophies, or I guess you can say theologies. Uh, they do not share much, if anything, in common, except a shared loyalty to Israel, but for different reasons. Now, question is, do Jewish Zionists who have worked with Christian Zionists know the reason why Christian Zionists are Zionists, namely because they believe that the establishment of Israel is a prerequisite for the return of Christ. I don't know. My assumption would be that some do and some don't. Um, by the same token, you can ask, um, do Jewish Zionists uh, who are loyal to the state of Israel think that Christian Zionists are also loyal to the state of Israel? Again, I don't know. Again, that is a question you would need to ask of those Zionists. The point is that Jewish Zionism and Christian Zionism exist for entirely different purposes. Jewish Zionism exists for the purpose of a homeland for Jews, which turned out to be in a place that was already occupied. And so to move there, many Jews had to go and destroy Palestinian homes and to kill many Palestinians and exile many of the others to the so-called Palestinian territories, which is not a very nice thing. Now, that particular act that was done by the Jewish Zionists was intended for the purpose of giving them a homeland. Whether Christian Zionists care whether Jews have, an, have a homeland is a question that I cannot answer. What I do know is that Christian Zionists 
support Israel because they see Israel as a prerequisite for the second coming of Christ. So what you have in effect, whether intentionally or not, is a marriage of convenience. Jewish Zionists and Christian Zionists are Zionists for entirely different reasons. But practically, practically, it doesn't matter that much. I mean, it matters theologically, but in terms of money, in terms of support, no, it doesn't matter that much. So regardless of whether the, the rabbis and the ministers who are involved in these different Zionist movements are aware of those differences is kind of irrelevant. What matters is that they are willing to let those differences fall by the wayside and focus on their shared interest, which is the maintenance of a Jewish state. And so most people who are not familiar with the fact that there are literally those two different types of Zionism, well, really more than two, but two for our purposes, assume that those two, Zionist, those two Zionisms are the same, that Christian Zionists literally want Jews to have a homeland. Now, I'm not saying that no Christian Zionists want Jews to have a homeland. Maybe there are some. But that is not the reason why they are Zionists. They are Zionists because they want Christ to return. Well, for Jewish Zionists, since they believe that the Messiah or the Messianic Age, depending upon the branch of Judaism, the movement of Judaism, do not believe in Jesus, um, they're not looking for the Messiah to return. They are looking either for the coming of the Messiah, the first and the only time, or for the establishment of a messianic age. So their beliefs literally have nothing in common with each other with respect to the reason why Israel should exist. And there you have the dilemma. So... We have two different kinds of Zionism that we've talked about. They are both different, and in some ways they are similar. But the similarity is only in supporting the existence of Israel. The reasons for supporting the existence of Israel are what matters. And those reasons have nothing to do with one another. Now... Let's go from that to another subject, but also related to Christian Zionism and Jewish Zionism. Regardless of whether Christian Zionists and Jewish Zionists are agreed on the reasons for the existence of Israel, they both, in effect, promote the persecution of Palestinians. And so evangelical Christians and Zionist Jews who support the state of Israel um, are the enemies of the Palestinians. That is something that I have always had a tough time wrapping my head around. Why? Well, for this reason. Many Palestinians are Christians. Not that many Israelis are Christians. So it seems as though these evangelical Christians are putting their eschatology, their premillennial eschatology, above their brethren who live in Israel, albeit the Christian Zionists are typically Protestants, and the 
Zionists in Palestine are typically Orthodox. So theologically, they may have some difference, but they certainly both have more in common with each other than either of them have with the Jews in Israel. So you would think that the natural thing would be an alliance between these evangelical Protestants and the Christians, including the Syriac Christians who live in Palestine, but that doesn't happen. And so right now, during the Israeli terrorist incident in Gaza, you have Christian Zionists supporting Israel. I have been following this situation very closely. I have not heard a, a peep from any of those evangelicals about the Syriac Christians who have been killed by the IDF, and there have been many of them. So their priorities are, to me, as an outsider, admittedly, rather unusual. I have always had a tough time understanding it. I have actually raised that issue with Christian Zionists. And in most cases, they themselves could not answer that question. I remember one time when I brought up the topic, this Christian Zionist did not even know that there were Christians in Palestine. He assumed that all the people who lived in Palestine were Muslims. I said, well, are you aware that there are also Jews who live in Palestine? He didn't know that either. So how much of Christian Zionism is a product of ignorance and how much is a product of eschatology is difficult to tell. But practically, in terms of the suffering of the Gazans. And that suffering seems to go on and on. And there does not seem to be any prospect of a respite. The IDF seems intent on continuing its terrorist attack on Gaza. And obviously, Hamas, as the representative of the Palestinians will try to defend, will try to defend Gaza. Now, as I've said before, I do not agree philosophically with Hamas, which is an organization best based on Islamia or in English Islamism, the belief that there should be a, an Islamic theocratic state. No, I don't believe in that. Although if Muslims want to do that for themselves, that's their business. But I certainly would not want to live in a place like that since I am not a Muslim. But in terms of the fact that Hamas is defending the pro def and protecting the interests of Gazans, yeah, I support them. It's a difficult conundrum for me because I never thought, honestly, that I would ever be in a situation where I would actively support the interests of Hamas. I never did. And yet here I am. Now, I don't support their philosophy. I don't support their politics. I don't support their ideology, but they are the protectors of the Gazans. And as an anti-Zionist, yeah, I mean, who would not support them on that basis? Well, I guess the answer is a Zionist. So I hope that clarifies it and establishes the reason why Christian Zionism really evangelical Christian Zionism and Jewish Zionism have 
essentially nothing in common other than a desire to maintain the Jewish state. But that desire is born of entirely different reasons. Entirely different reasons. They have nothing in common, and yet Jewish rabbis who are Zionists, Christian ministers who are Zionists, will commonly work together, will appear on the same stage with one another, will participate in joint fundraising campaigns. I have first knowledge of that, firsthand knowledge, because I have actually met some of the people involved in those activities. Currently, I do not know any Christian Zionists, but I have in the past, and I have had extensive discussions with them. I know what they believe. They are not shy to say it. And I know why they believe it. And I know that their beliefs are completely contradictory in most respects to the beliefs of Jewish Zionists. But it seems like a Zionist odd couple, an odd couple born of convenience. And that is ultimately how I see the relationship between Christian Zionists and Jewish Zionists. By going back to the Broadway play, later the TV series, The Odd Couple. Um, people with very different beliefs, people with very different eschatologies, people with very different views of why Israel should exist, yet because they both believe that Israel should exist, they are willing to work with each other, and in the case of Christian Zionists, even work with each other to the detriment of Christians living in Palestine. For the time being, this has been Mark by Mark A. Foster, Ph.D., for the Institute for Dialectical Metarealism. Have a pleasant day and an even better day tomorrow.